As I shared with the media last week, we will update our materials to address the feedback and ongoing developments. We will also improve our teaching methods based on the experiences gained. Let me elaborate. First, we will customise the lesson material further for students of different age groups. At this point, let me emphasise that this CCE lesson was not meant to teach the Israel-Palestine history or Middle East politics. It is impossible to do so in an hour-long session, and it was never our intention in the first place. For younger students, we will simplify our material even more. Our focus will continue to be on sensitising our younger ones to the plight of the innocent victims, how they can express sympathy for and empathise with others, and how they can manage their emotions regarding the conflict. For the older students, we will also teach them to be more discerning of different sources of information. For the most mature students, we will update the lesson material based on more recent events and help them better understand Singapore's national interests. Minister Vivian had set out at MFA COS last week some of these recent developments and how Singapore is responding. To reiterate, after the 7 October attack, we said Singapore recognised Israel's right to self-defence. But Israel's military response has gone too far. The catastrophic situation in Gaza demands a humanitarian ceasefire to alleviate the suffering of the civilian victims and to enable humanitarian assistance to reach them immediately. We will also explain to our students Singapore's principal position on the Israel-Palestine issue over the decades, and this is for the older students such as how Singapore had voted in favour of calling for an immediate ceasefire at international platforms, how we have contributed to capacity building efforts to the Palestinian Authority, and how we will continue doing our part to advance international efforts towards reaching a two-state solution at the UN. We will certainly continue to reflect the diversity of views from our community within our lesson material, and it is a key learning objective for our students to understand how to manage differences and diversity with respect and sensitivity. To the extent possible, we will also design the lesson material to avoid parts being taken out of context selectively. Second, beyond updating the material, we will also better equip our teachers to engage their students in this CCE lesson. For teachers who would like the extra support, we will organise extra CCE workshops for them to go through the lesson plans with specialists and experienced teachers. Where appropriate, we will involve resource persons to assist with these workshops. This is in addition to the current suite of teachers' preparations within schools. <coughs> Given the diversity of backgrounds and experiences of our teachers, some schools have adopted useful approaches like organising their teachers in teams to conduct the CCE lesson, which enhances the quality of delivery. For example, Jurongville Secondary School carried out this lesson with a pair of teachers. One teacher focused on facilitating the discussion in class, while the other looked out for the emotional well-being of students. In Ishun Innova JC, the history teacher did a large group share briefing to the, on the historical context of the conflict before students discussed the issue further in smaller groups facilitated by their CCE teacher. For a sensitive topic like the Israel-Hamas conflict, having teachers from different backgrounds and faiths to conduct the lesson together is also a powerful example to our students of how, while we can have different beliefs, we can come together as Singaporeans to discuss complex issues sensitively and respectfully. We are also making broader efforts to train teachers to teach CCE. Last May, we set up the Singapore Centre for CCE at the National Institute of Education to support professional development of educators in CCE. There is a core of specialised CCE teachers in the teaching fraternity who are available to mentor their colleagues. Let me assure all teachers that MOE and your school leaders are aware of the challenges you may be facing in delivering the CCE lessons, especially those that touch on sensitive topics. Speak with your school leaders who will support you in carrying out your professional duties. For us at MOE, there, are, there were other useful learning points from this episode. First learning point, we cannot underestimate the damage that misrepresentation can cause. Let me cite an example. Some online commentators selectively picked out one slide out of many in an MOE lesson deck which was circulated last week asserting that the schools were telling the students the situation in Israel and Gaza only started 7 October 2023. This insinuated that MOE was pro-Israel and that we characterised one side as the aggressor and the other side as victim. This riled up many, but actually the words on the said slide were events 
since 7 October. And it came after a slide that emphasised the long, complex and often violent history of conflict in the region. In addition, MOE had provided background material on historical developments behind the conflict to help teachers better understand the context. This was meant to be shared with students who wish for more information on the history rather than for the teacher to teach history to the whole class, which is not the learning objective of this CCE lesson. This is indeed a sobering reminder that in the online space, it is not always easy to separate those who question the material with well-meaning intentions from those who join the fray with ulterior intent to stir up negative emotions on an already sensitive topic. Our second learning point, managing differences respectfully is still a work in progress. By and large, Singaporeans express our views in a civil and respectful way. Still, some of the online vitro and anger towards MOE and our teachers from this episode reminds us that we cannot take this for granted. Some educators have received rude and abusive comments. We have come across one picture of an educator being circulated online. The caption contained a racial slur, insulting her as an uneducated person of her ethnicity, and encouraged others to make this educator's photo go viral online. MOE takes this very seriously. While we may disagree on issues, personal attacks and racial slurs against fellow Singaporeans cannot be condoned. We have to be positive role models for our children. MOE will investigate all instances of abuse, harassment or threats against our educators. They have MOE's full support and the full protection of the law. Our third learning point. We must be very watchful for potential external interference. Some external online parties have taken an active interest in our discussions. Some show no hesitation to join in the discussions and add their comments to incite anger and unhappiness. <clears throat> Yet others try to play on Singaporeans' conscience to adopt their positions. It is not difficult to guess the agenda of these external parties. We have to be careful to not fall prey to their attempts to rile up our people and undermine our cohesion. Fourth learning point. Our unity depends on sustained commitment and effort. Last week, <clears throat> last week, Tuwe Maliki and I met more than 300 school principals again to listen to their feedback since we last discussed the issue with them in January. Many of them shared the challenges they encountered and how they overcome them. It, was certainly, it has certainly not been an easy time for our teachers and principals. In the light of this episode and criticisms against our schools and teachers, we discussed frankly, should we continue teaching this CCE lesson? given that some people have suggested that we should abandon it since it's so difficult and sensitive. Is it still worth doing it? In response, many of my principals shared this. We ask ourselves, how can we allow the seeds of hatred and distrust to be planted in our next generation? How can we allow our society to be split by this and other similar issues? When we look back in years to come, would we have discharged our duty as educators if our people became more divided, unable to respond as one, view each other with suspicion, or become unable to manage differences or diversity respectfully and sensitively? What is our responsibility as educators? We ask ourselves the toughest two questions. If not us, who? If not now, when? I drew comfort and confidence from their conviction. In this, indeed, it is our duty to guide the next generation well, help them develop good character and values, and build a sound foundation for them to thrive in the future. Education is a serious responsibility. My MOE colleagues and I feel the weight of our mission. We are determined to discharge our duty and do right by our students.